But in the end, it all came down to whether we would allow Kosovo to suffer another round of ethnic cleansing. Half the country was vacated. And there were people who said, well, oh, it's such a small place. The great thing about the modern world is with all the intrusiveness of the media, it's an interesting time. Did you see the drone overhead when we started the, ser the service here? I'm sure it was a news drone. They were making cameras. But I wondered how many of the soldiers thought, do I need to pull out a gun and shoot it down? It's, a, it's an interesting world. But what it means is that the very large can look small in the face of a popular assault, and the very small can be large if they stand for something bigger than themselves. Kosovo, for the world and for the United States and for NATO, stood for something bigger than ourselves. So, before you think about all that still needs to be done, be grateful that on your long and hard journey these last 20 years, the pieces held, 
there has been no return to systematic ethnic violence, to the widespread killings, to the burning of villages, to the destruction of religious and cultural institutions. The credit for that belongs to all the people of Kosovo, of all backgrounds, who choose every day and make no mistake about it, whether we are aware or we just sort of do it, every single day we choose whether to live in the hope of a bright future or in the shackles of our regrets and resentments. Never forget as you think about the challenges before us. And I say that to your existing leaders. You have already done something astonishing. You have given a whole generation their first 20 years of life in peace. Now, NATO was a triumph of what I think works best in the world, multinational cooperation. General Clark was the commander, but there were 19 democracies working together to save lives, defend values, advance peace and freedom.